morning meditation today. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. You all know this phrase, I've heard it many times, but I think it is to sink in. Do we give to each of them what is theirs? Are we good citizens of our country? Do we pay our taxes? Do we love, support our God-given country? Do we protect it from enemies, foreign and domestic? Do we stand to defend all that is good and holy and get rid of any evil and sinfulness in our homeland? Do we give to God what is His? Do you know that you and I belong to Him? We are the work of His hands, and in His goodness He has prepared a place for us in heaven. If many act as if there is no God, or make themselves God by usurping power over others, as Satan said, I want to ascend to the throne of the Most High. If we belong to God, necessarily all our thoughts, our actions, our possessions and families really belong to God, and we are only stewards of what He gave us. Do we really believe this? In a moment of silence, let us place ourselves into the presence of God. Please stand.
reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him, and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him, and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name, giving you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other, there is no God beside me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, there is no other. The word of the Lord. Give the Lord glory and honor. Give the Lord glory and honor. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all your lands. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Give the Lord glory and honor. For great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Awesome is he beyond all gods. For all the gods of the nations are things of naught, but the Lord made the heavens. Give the Lord glory and honor. Give to the Lord your family of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory to his name. Bring gifts and enter his courts. Give the Lord glory and honor. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the peoples with equity. Give the Lord glory and honor. I read from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all you do, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love, and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit with much conviction. The word of the Lord. That's 
was the purpose of sending the disciples of the Herodians and the Pharisees and all of them. They wanted to get rid of Jesus once and for all. And they had a proof, a 100% proof way of doing it. Because if Jesus says about the taxes, yes, then he would be called a collaborator with the Romans and he would be done with. If he says no, then he would be turned over to the Romans because he would be a rebel. So either way, Jesus was in a dilemma, in a pickle, so to speak. But things, well, gee, things change when Jesus is involved. You can't trip him up. He says, show me the coin. The thing was that the coin was a denarius, and the denarius, the tax was, he had an image, a profile of Caesar on it. So when the temple tax was there, Caesar's face was on it. It says, Augustus Tiberius Augustus, son of the divine Augustus. Julius Caesar and Caesar Augustus, these two were made divine by the, by the Senate. They proclaimed them divine because they were so good, so wonderful. And he was not adopted as a son, but he called himself also a divine, a son of the divine. Now when Christ says this, he showed me the coin, it's like you should not have engraven images on it. That's one of the things to learn from Moses. God told him, don't have any engraven images because you start worshiping them. Now, Christ says something different. See, he goes back all the way to Genesis 1, 26, 27, when it says, I made them in my image, male and female I made them, in my image. People are the images of God. The only image which we ought to have is the image of God within us. We don't worship anything else. So we have God within us and so we are marked for God. Whereas the temple tax, the money goes to Caesar. People have a very hard time sometimes to trust in relying upon God because it's a world, it's a harsh world. You gotta make a living, you gotta support the family, you gotta have a job, you gotta so many things going on. But yet God says, let go. Give me yourself and I will take care of you because you're mine. Like you have children, no matter what they do, it seems like you always take care of them because they're your children. How much more would God be our Father than calling us to that? So there was in Second World War. It was in Guam, there was a bomber squadron stationed. And one day, one of the bombers was called to go on a bombing mission to Kokura in Japan, one of the southernmost islands on the northern tip of that southern island, Kokura. And so they were sent up there, up on the flight, going close, and it got cloudy and foggy, and you couldn't see a thing. For over an hour, they circled around, crisscrossing. They knew they were there, but they couldn't see. In those days, they had no instrument. They went by sight and calculations, and so they figured out how to drop the bombs. They couldn't see. Over an hour, the fuel gauge started going down. It says, we got to do something now. Either go to the secondary target or just drop them blindly. So they decided to go to the secondary target. Went there. It was clear sky. They couldn't figure it out. See it? Boom. The bombs hit the target. So they came back home for the debriefing. And so, as I said, then all of a sudden, uh, an intelligence officer came in and says, you were in Kokura the up there? Yes. Was you dropped the bombs? No, they said. We couldn't see. They said, thank God. We just got intelligence. The Japanese had taken all the American boys of the capture that brought them over to Kokura. You have killed them all. So God takes care of his people if only we allow him to do that. We call him Father for a reason, because he is our Father, he made us, he called us into himself, so that we might, as his images, be images of God in the world. But yet we still have a hard time. Does St. Paul also? He was up in, he was in Corinth now. You know, if you know Athens, it's to the west, there's Corinth. And about 300 miles north, there is Thessalonica, Thessalonia. It was Alexander the Great, had a half-sister, and he named the city after her, so that's why Thessalonia is that name. Anyway, he was in Thessalonica, and what he usually would do, he would go to the synagogue and preach, and then he would show them, there's Jesus, he came, but we missed him. So, while well, he went there, the Jews didn't like him, they kicked him out. So the second step would be, he would go to the Gentiles, and the Gentiles, he would discuss and show them that Jesus is the Lord. So, but the Jews were so stubborn up there, they want to get rid of him. They want to destroy him, just like Jesus. 
So they want to destroy him, and they have found, found one reason. It's that he is, commits treason. Treason. Why? Because he said, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is King, and says, we only have one king, that's Caesar. And so they wanted to get rid of him, and he eventually left. Anyway, he writes them up there, hang on, be good people, God will be with you. And he showed them, right in the opening sentence of the letter to the Thessalonians, there is, without it being defined yet, mind you, he talks about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity, and he talks about the three theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity. All in the beginning verses which we had, the letter to the Thessalonians. So he was also in the same boat, but he trusted God, he knew. Just like back in the old days when they had the Native Americans living in this part of the world, they had one of those rituals. After dad taught the boy everything he needed to know about hunting, trapping, fishing, and whatnot, everything he knew. So at the age of 13, he should know all these things. And so his son, one evening, he said, come, let's go, we're going to get you ready for it to be a man. So he takes him, blindfolds him, and leads him out into the forest for several miles so the kid wouldn't know where he would be. So there he was, it's already getting really dark, and he takes a blindfold off and says, here son, here's a knife. I'm going to be back tomorrow. So there's the kid, 13 years old, in the middle of nowhere. He knows there are grizzlies out there, and wolves, and there are snakes, and God knows where else is at the pumas. And, and so there he was, in the pitch dark. So any time he heard a rustling of leaves, or a twig was broken, he, he cringes because, is it a wolf, a bear, what is it? Or is it maybe one of the warring tribes in the neighborhood? He didn't know. So there he was, and all night long, he's on at the ready, just to fight if need be. Tense as it could be, finally the dawn comes in, the light comes in, he could start making up flowers and trees, he could make up the path, and as he looked at the path, there was a figure. It was the figure of his father, with bow and arrow ready to destroy anyone who comes close to his son. This is just a passage to learn to teach him how to trust so God teaches us, he puts us out of, the, out of darkness, we are thrown into a jungle out there, and in a jungle we have to make a living. We try to make things work with the world, but we are gods. We are the God, children of God, and we are called to become like that more and more through our daily life. So it's very difficult for us, but it's manageable because God has given us his spirit, the spirit to lead us. Cyrus in the second reading, a uh, first reading, Cyrus the king, he says, you don't know me, but I put you there. You think you're a god? No, you are not. I am. But I will lead my people. And so he did. He always took care of his people, and he uses everyone to his pleasure to accomplish his will. He even to bring the people back to their homeland. So Cyrus led the people back, back home. So God, if we trust God, God will take care of us. The only thing we have to do is hold on for dear life, no matter what comes. The Blessed Mother stood underneath the cross. It seemed hopeless because the Son of God was dead. But hope against hope, and there she is now, our Mother. She will teach us how to stand strong, as long as we have the faith, hope, and charity which we have. The faith which was given us the baptism, that's the only thing that carries us, that is important in this life. Faith, we have to learn and study up on it. With faith, faith comes hope. And as we live in the hope of the expectation of the coming of God, we start to live in charity. So God calls us to a great thing. What is it? It's nothing less but being a son and daughter of God the Most High. Let us please stand and confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, born of the Father and the Lord.
Very Sanctus is Domine, Fons Omnis Sanctitatis, Hec Ergo Dona Quesibus, Spiritus Tui Rore Sanctifica, Ut Nobis Corpus et Sanguinis Fiant, Dominus Nostri Iesu Christo. Tui con passiones voluntari et radaretur, accepit panem, et gracias acem sprecit, dedit per discipulus suis dicens. Accibite et manducate ex hoc omnes, hoc est en in corpus meum, pro provovis tradetur. Simone Moro, postuam genatum est, accipiens et caricem, iterum gratis actions, dei discipulus suis dicens. Accibite et vivite ex eo omnes, Hic est enim calix sanguinis mei, novi et eterni testamenti, qui provobis et promotis et condetur in remissione pectorum, hoc facite in mim commemorazione. Mysterium Fidei Mortem Tuam Conciamus Domine, et Domine Resurrectionum, Convertium Domineum. Memore Sigitur Mortis et Resurrectionis Eius, Tibi Domine Panem Vite, et Calicem Salutis Offerius, Gratis Agentes Quionos Dignus Habuisti, Astare Coram et De Tibi Ministrare et Suplices de Percamor, Ut corporis et sanguinis Christi participes, et Spiritus Sancto convergemur in uno. Recordare, Domine, ecclesi tue, toto con virtuse, ut eum in carnitate perficias, un con Papa nostro Francisco, et Episcopo nostro Dono, et Universi Clero. Memento, etiam fratum nostrorum, qui in spe resurrectionis dormierunt, omniumque in tua misericatione de doctorum, et eos in lumen voltus tui admite, omnium nostrum quesimus miserere, ut compiata dei genetrice Virgine Maria, sede beate Iosef, e justem Virgine Sponsi, beate sopostalis et omnibus sanctis, qui tibi a secula fratuerunt, eterna vita, Pere amor esse consortes, et elaudemos e glorificemos per filium tuum, Iesum Christum. Per ipsum et cum ipsum et in ipsum, est tibi par Dio Padre Omnipotente, in unitate Spiritus Sancti, omnes honor e gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Cibis, salutarvis moniti e divine istituzioni formate, fademus dicere. Pater nostre, Dio se cielis, santo e cento il nome di Dio, adena e prendi il tuo, Dio e il nome del suo, sicuro e in cielo e in terra. Fanno nostro e diviano del nome suo Dio, e del mente di ogni seguito nostro, sicuro e il nostro e il tuo, si deve dore con nostro, et ne nos inducas in tentazione, se libero nos al malo. Libero nos quesimus, Domine, ab omnibus males, ad propitius pacem in virus nostris, ut ope misericordia tu et agiuti, et a peccato simis semper liberi, et ad omni perturbazione securi, expectantis piatam stem, ad adventum salvatoris nostri, Iesu Christi. Amen. 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 Domini Iesu Christi, qui in existi apostolis tuis, pacem relinquo vobis, pacem neam do vobis. Ne respicias peccato nostra, sed fidem ecclesia tue, eunque secundum voluntatem tuam, pacificare e coronare digneris, vivius e venus in secula seculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sempre vivisco. Amen.
Grant the Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord, Dominus Lubiscum. Thank you. 